The good news is I can see the screen. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Eric. Thanks. <laughs> Where were you last night? <laughs> I thought I was the only one who didn't see it. Oh, uh, if you were a panelist last night, it might have been different for the participants. Yeah. Uh, All right. So I would just remind you to speak into the microphones. <clears throat> Hello, all. I'm Zachary Cronin, Assistant City Engineer for Portsmouth. Thank you for coming to the Willard Ave Reconstruction Project. Uh, if people have not yet signed in, I do request uh, please sign in before you leave. Next slide. So introductions. I'm Zach Thurman, Assistant City Engineer. I'm here with Terry Damaris, the City Engineer. Phil Corbett of CMA Engineering, our consultant, and Dave Fosis, our construction engineer. Uh, that includes uh, city staff, the engineering consultants, and the, the stakeholders being residents in the area who will be affected by construction. I'll hand it over to Phil Corbett now from CMA. So, right, tonight's our second public meeting for the Willard Avenue reconstruction project. So we're going to review a couple of things that we went over the first time uh, and describe a little bit what we've been working on to date and present the conceptual designs. We took some of the feedback from the public meeting. We've been working with city staff and been working through the design issues uh, to develop some conceptual layouts for the roadways, sidewalks, curbing, and utilities. Um, and talk a little bit about what uh, the next steps are in our schedule and then get any feedback. So we'll, we'll have this presentation tonight. We have some people in the audience, some people on Zoom, and then this will be posted on the city's website. So you, if you can't see plans or anything, you can, uh, you can zoom in and look at them on your own screen. So tonight, right, primarily to uh, present the conceptual design and get some feedback on that and then talk about what we're doing uh, next for our next steps. So primary purpose of the project to replace the utilities, uh, replace the water mains and services sewer mains and separate the water, uh, the sewer and storm drainage and provide new storm drainage and generally improve uh, stormwater collection and drainage throughout the project area. Uh, incorporate some what we call low impact development stormwater treatment. So there'll be some Devices that will capture stormwater and provide some water quality treatment before we discharge them downstream into the drainage system. And then, of course, reconstruct after all the utilities and drainage are done the streets and sidewalks and add new uh, curbing. And then, yeah, unique to this section is the um, odor issues on Willard Ave. So, between the utility upgrades and a couple other approaches, uh, address that issue. So we're completed to date. We uh, did basement surveys. So worked with a sub consultant that went into most people's homes and we're able to collect information so we can best plan the utility connections and understand who has sump pumps and who needs drain connections and those things. Uh, so that was helpful. I think we did 65 surveys within this project area. Uh, completed the geotechnical investigation. So that was the boring so we could understand where there's ledge and what the subsurface soil conditions are like. Reviewed the trees. There are a lot of very nice trees within the project area. A lot of it's a great resource, and we want to understand how to best work that into the design. Uh, and then developed the conceptual drainage utility designs and the roadway and streetscape uh, concept designs. So, all right, tree review. 
Um, as I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, nice trees within the corridor, and that was some of the feedback we've got at the last public meeting and since the public meeting was uh, just concerns with the impacts of trees, and it is impossible to replace all the utilities, uh, re reconstruct the road, and add or replace sidewalks without any impacts to trees, but we did our best to balance the layout of the road with the sidewalks, um, narrowed up some things, uh, some sections, uh, and we're able to work around some other areas, and so we reviewed this with the arborist and, and assessed the value of the trees. Right. In general. Yep. So certainly there are some that are, you know, 30 year old trees that are unique species and are mature and to try to get back to something like that is difficult. Uh, so that has a little bit more value than some, some other trees that are it's actually some basic species and other things that are more easily replaced. So consider that in the layout. We'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail. Um, what we heard at the first public meeting was there were concerns about the odor issues on Willard Ave, you know, particularly some, some people just down from Lafayette Road. Uh, consider the balance of new sidewalks. So we, you know, this is the opportunity to add sidewalks and that's the typical approach with these projects is upgrading sidewalks, ADA compliant, providing a nice five and a half foot concrete sidewalk that can be maintained it is ADA accessible, um, but we want to consider that with the demand, uh, the traffic volumes and speeds, um, uh, and the impacts that has on the trees and yards and other things. So we, we endeavor to do that. And then, uh, you know, this is a comprehensive list, but kind of the high points of some of the issues was, was uh, address the drainage issues, and that is kind of a snowy picture. That was the day after the public meeting, it rained and it snowed. So I saw the the drainage issues that kind of connect between Orchard and Ash Street uh, along the back of people's houses there. So we're trying to accommodate that as well as some other issues with water coming off the hill from South Street onto Ash Street and the intersection of Ash Street. Some of those catch basins not functioning as well as they could. So consider those issues and um, work to incorporate it into our design. Uh, so with that, Proposed typical sections we have for the roadways. And again, if you can't see it well here, you can always grab it on the, it's up on the wall if you're here today. And if you're at home, it'll be posted. You can look at it on your screen. Uh, but generally, Willard Avenue will be uh, 32 feet curb to curb, which is the same section that um, was previously improved a few years ago uh, down at Marston. Um, and it will have a grass strip on both sides that will vary in width. Generally, there's a reasonably wide right of way. So there's, there's room to do improvements and try to work the sidewalk around existing trees and maintain those trees as best we can. Uh, and then Ash Street will be significantly narrower in hopes of not of, of limiting the impacts to both. There's nice trees on both sides of the road there, and as well as have it, uh, one side, a sidewalk on the north side um, that would be without a grass strip just to really try to limit the overall section and, and limit the impacts of the movements. And, yeah, right, and there's a couple driveways there that um, it would be difficult to park in the driveway without standing up to the sidewalk if we didn't do that. Uh, and then for Orchard Street, you know, there's kind of the two sections there. Once you get past Ash on the, on the west side of Ash, it narrows up and that's what we're going to maintain uh, that can accommodate what it needs to today. We are going to plan for a sidewalk through that section, um, but it would be attached again to limit some of those impacts. And then the section um, that is north of Ash. Um, yep, uh, would be 28 foot curb to curb. Uh, so a little bit narrower than we were thinking originally. We would, there's the sidewalk that's on the uh, west, north side that we would maintain and improve, make a continuous sidewalk from Marston down to Ash Street. Um, but we eliminated the sidewalk on the other side because the impacts that had and looking at considering the overall pedestrian demand and vehicular traffic through there. Uh, and then there's also several 
homes and some multifamily homes that kind of park half within the right of way and half in their yard and pull up driveways there. So we looked at accommodating that with a, a mountable curb. So it'd be something that would help with stormwater collection and drainage, but would be easily driven up on and parked over so that you could maintain those um, parking spots. So with that, that's the overall layout. And uh, again, you're welcome to come take a look at the plan. After the meeting, we can take a look at it and folks at home can just zoom in on that online. Uh, but generally, sidewalks on both sides of Willard, grass strips for most section, except for the very first part of Willard. Um, and we've shown on here kind of three levels of tree impact. So green trees were pretty optimistic, can be accommodated with the layout. Uh, and then there's some orange trees, I think, on here that uh, we would, that are close to improvements and need to consider and monitor during construction. Well, I don't know if we have, I think we have, I think we have green and red on this project. So yeah, I think we have a few trees that we know we're taking out that will be directly impacted by improvements or otherwise the city wants to take down for other issues under like power lines or something else. And then uh, the green trees were, were optimistic can be maintained and saved uh, after construction of the project. And that's most of them. We, we did a lot to reconfigure things to try to save a lot of the trees. Uh, but yeah, and then you can see the, the sidewalk layout on Orchard on one side, it would switch over as you get past Ash and, uh, and then none on the south side of the road between Marston and Ash Street. And right, the purple is the sidewalk layout. And then on Ash Street, it would be on the north side of the road, attached to the road right there. And the, the limits of that sidewalk and the roadway are pretty much the limits of the pavement today. So the, the roadway section would actually be narrowed up a little bit, but uh, we add the sidewalk in there. Excuse me, sir, would you mind addressing the three properties on Orchard Street to the left of Ash as we're looking at it? I, I count five trees. Right to the left, please, right up, right there, right above you. Yeah, no, there's uh, there's several. There's right there, you know, there's five trees. 155, that's two of them, two major trees, planted by the city arborist, Patilda, Patilda Strauss. Yes, and we are showing they're all trees, not being touched. They're all, they're all safe. safe. Yes. And the three trees that are beside that were planted let's say more recently, uh, they are intending on being stayed. They're going to be kept also. If like they're green, right. they're, they're yes. two stay. Yes. Okay. Now, I'm looking at this. I'm sorry I did not bring my regular class. But on the other side, is that where you're putting a sidewalk? Yes. Or? The other side of the street, yes. Now, I'm not a representative right now, but I've spoken to seven out of eight people in this area right now. And they do not want a sidewalk in that area simply because of the nature of the road itself. I think you kind of elaborated. Yep. It's a very, very awkward street, to say the least. I'm a retired engineer. I know what it's going to take in order to accommodate that work there. But we are concerned about the character. And from those places there, all of us have basically lived there. Some people, all of their life. I've been there since the mid nineties. My neighbors, 10 years across the street, 30. So there's all an inherent, what do you call it? Familiarity and, you know, so that's more or less why I'm here tonight is to see what you guys are gonna do. We wanna work with you and all of that because I know the problems that we have right Because I've sat up in my living room I live at 155, and I've been able to look out my front window, and I've seen rowboats go down Willard Street during a bad rain. And so I know that it needs some type of remediation, et cetera. And it's a long time. It's been a long time coming, quite honestly. But it's just, uh, this, uh, this is a very proud and homogenous neighborhood. So they want, I think people want that. I think you want to keep that character as much as you possibly can within the confines of doing what's important. 
for the community and this particular area from an engineering standpoint. So we can talk about that a little bit. Let's finish the presentation sure. and then we'll uh, we'll go into those individual issues because we did have some ideas regarding your specific spot. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I think that's it unless yeah, that's it for the roadway layout. Uh, and then just touching on right some of the stormwater improvements. So they'll, you know, they we're, we're constrained by trying to fit things within the right of way and the roadway. But we have had success with some kind of urban stormwater management and uh, what we call best management practices uh, that would be incorporated into the project to treat stormwater before we discharge it into the drainage system. So that'll be some of those types of techniques. And right, so this is the conceptual utility layout. So you can see we're replacing, well, you probably can't see from here, but I'll describe it to you. Uh, we're replacing water main um, from where it ended. Um, That's a bad one. Yep, and, and from there, uh, uh, Willard from Mafia to there on uh, Ash Street on the section that's north of Willard that hasn't been replaced. The other section had been replaced more, more recently uh, and then throughout Orchard. And then obviously the sewer main would be reconfigured and separated from the drainage. Uh, and that's the major uh, trunk line that uh, feeds Lafayette Road pump station. So considering that and, and likely that's related to some of the, the drainage issues or the motor issues. Uh, and then, right, adding all new closed drainage system, including extending that up to Ash Street uh, so that we can accommodate some of those issues there ahead of the intersection and up the hill a little bit. So that's the blue. So, so yeah, sunny blue or water. Dark blue, 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 dark Houses on the are on that street. Are we included in any of this? You are not included. You you have gotten recent utility replacements. You're not getting new utilities now. Well, I know I had an issue a couple of years ago, and the water line just kept breaking like first and third close to my house. And then I was like, "Well, they try to fix it, and then it broke a little further down, and broke a little further down, and they said this is horrible." Okay, yeah, no, we'll, we'll confirm that's the situation, but that hadn't been part of the plan right now, so we'll have to. Which house is it? 28. 28. Yeah. Uh, next one. Yeah, next one. So, right, will there have order issues? So, right, certainly separating the sewer and drain will be important, uh, but that's, we don't think, the primary cause of the issues in individual homes, um, but likely upsizing the pipe from what is now 15 inch to 24 inch will help uh, as it accommodates, you know, will accommodate the flows from the pump station much better, uh, as well as we're considering a potential vent where the Lafayette Road horse main discharges into um, a manhole Lafayette Road so that we could help uh, vent that prior to heading down Willard Avenue. And then We'll have to consider and confirm that it does what it needed to do post construction. So, uh, yeah. so preliminary uh, working through, uh, we'll incorporate comments from this and the, on the conceptual layout, work through the preliminary design through the summer, and then move into the final design details through the fall, and then. You know, we're, we're designing this in conjunction with the EMAP separation project, which is under an EPA consent decree, so that has required deadlines. We have to see how this works with budgets and constraints uh, and scheduling and other sufficiencies and putting them both out and, and how that best works, but uh, which haven't gotten to schedule the exact plan for construction start yet. Um, right, so there's a website specific to the project on the city's website. So if you looked at the, went to the city's public works website and looked for the projects, there is the uh, Union Willard Ave Sewer Separation Project. We'll have this posted here. There's a, there's a link to sign us to for uh, email notifications so we can send stuff out um, and get any other feedback. And with that, I think we've gotten through everything and we'd be happy to 
take some comments. Yeah, we'll start with uh, Emily. Hi, thank you for having us on and doing this virtually. I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to say thanks for putting this all together and putting images to what you're talking about. It's really helpful. I live on the corner of Willard and Ash, and I have two young kids, and I'm thrilled to see the sidewalks. Um, I know that we're certainly struggling with some of our tighter streets, and so we want to be thoughtful about not encroaching on people's yards. Um, but also for the safety of the kids and having places to walk and, and um, be where the cars kind of can come quickly through. I'm thankful to see those. So thank you so much and being thoughtful about our trees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other uh, comments from Zoom? Okay, go ahead. Hello, I'm uh, Kate Hedom. I live at One Ash Street on the corner of Ash and um, and uh, kind of near Emily as well. And I just, I wanted to make sure you guys knew that Ash Street also has an odor issue. <laughs> so I'm not sure when you say the Willard odor issue, it um, absolutely comes down our street too. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that was, that was known. Yes, yeah, um, we believe that uh, the work we're doing to eliminate the odor issue along uh, Willard with help farther up and okay. along the line as well. Okay, because it, it travels around, you know, like, because I'm on the corner of, or of Orchard and Ash. And so it, it's kind of all of these streets um, that have a, that sewer scent. <laughs> uh, yeah, understood. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you for letting us um, know. Yeah, and um, just one more thing. In terms of the sidewalks, you know, we're, we're still out on how we feel about the sidewalks. So, it was certainly very helpful to see the design. And um, I'm just wondering on a street like Ash Street that is so small, and at this point it's a pretty wide street. So um, I, I don't think the impacts would be huge on anyone's property, but I'm just wondering what the thoughts were a little bit, maybe you can speak to um, what, what the impacts or if, if you really think there would be an improvement by adding a sidewalk on so, that street. Uh, we're trying to interconnect, interconnect the neighborhood and on that particular section of road, what we were thinking is the sidewalk would actually go where some of the asphalt is today. Uh -huh. so there'd be no, no loss of green space on either side of the street. Yeah. It would just, we would just narrow the street up a little bit. It's a little too wide. Mm -hmm. And that would create room to have that sidewalk and that walking space that would interconnect it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Stephen, go ahead. Hi, um, I, I want to confirm, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. OK, all right, cool. Um, I'm the owner, property owner at 133 Orchard Street. And um, I wanted to say uh, thanks for uh, uh, having the five trees, including my neighbor Rick's, uh, uh, still in green there, uh, because those are uh, quite impactful to the property and uh, good good to keep those on the property. Thank you for that. And I wanted to echo uh, Rick's concerns about adding a sidewalk onto the other side of Orchard Street, um, similar to what the issues he brought up um, because it gets quite narrow. It's quite a quite an interesting turn as you go towards that, that um, downhill uh, side there. Um, and I'm assuming that it's going to eat a little bit into the width of the road and a little bit into the properties to make it viable. Um, but I just wanted to raise the same concern um, and, uh, you know, as well as uh, echo what I believe are the, the thoughts of some of the other owners along that other side who will be impacted by that, that sidewalk ad. Um, but that, those are the comments I had. Um, the, other, the other question I had um, is regarding, and I'm not sure if you've gotten to this, the timeline impacts, um, how, how the rollout is expected to go. Will there be a schedule um, released to the, the residents so that we can kind of sort of manage parking or if we have any activities with people coming to the houses, things like that? Yeah, we'll address all those types of issues when we have a pre-construction meeting. 
Okay. So once we have a contractor on board, we'll schedule a reconstruction meeting where we have a meet, meet, meet the contractor and we go through the scheduling issues. And, and once uh, we have a contractor, they'll let us know how they're going to build the project. We try not to tell them how to do it. Of yeah, of course. Uh, they are generally the experts in construction. So we allow them to have some leniency as long as they're you know, doing it in such a way that we're all going to be happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, so those types of issues will come up the, at the final meeting. Um, regarding the sidewalk, which has come up a couple of times at Orchard. Um, so we were looking, we were out there right after the original meeting. We had actually, uh, last month, we were looking at the trees. We spent a long time looking at topography in the area. So we noticed that, um, basically speaking, Lafayette Road is the bridge, and all water drains down from Lafayette through all the yards, and uh, there's a bit of, a, uh, of an area that is south of Orchard Street that right. yeah. the first meeting where uh, one of their principal comments was how much water goes Yeah, that, that place is pretty, so, yeah, it, it does take so a lot of water. One of our principal thoughts here in providing the sidewalk that, that you're, talk, you're talking about as well is actually using that sidewalk as, as more or less a dam to contain that water and then pick it up with the, uh, the storm drainage system so that those yards that those people were concerned about will begin to dry out some. So that is, that's the principal reason why we're showing that sidewalk is because we want to, we want to create some sort of dam so that that water is not freely running from your yard across the road over that ledge across the road and then into through their yards and then down the hill into the flat area that is off a little bit. So that's one of the one of the principal key kind of design thoughts that we had and why we're putting that sidewalk in there is not only is it accessibility, but it's actually a stormwater feature. Okay, I'm not a structural engineer uh, by any stretch, um, but that that uh, thematically makes sense um, to me, but I just wanted to echo that just from a, a, both an aesthetic and a functional concern from the residents across the street from me, some of whom may not be on the call, but I wanted to make sure that the, uh, their, their thoughts uh, were uh, represented, you know, some of the conversations that we've had in, in tune with what Rick said. Um, and also, honestly, uh, being that is my primary access um, to to leave the property and go out to to Lafayette Road. It is really quite narrow, and I'm wondering to what degree the plan includes in, encroaching on the, the the current road width versus biting into people's properties. You actually, people. when you actually stated it verbally um, when you were originally talking, you actually hit it right on the head. Where we were looking at maybe chewing up a foot or two of road. And afford it to a yard to get that sidewalk in there. Okay. Make. Okay. Um, you were yeah. Exactly right when you said that. Okay. Thanks. Um, I don't want to take up too much more uh, time. I, I've already made my points. Um, so if there's someone else that would also like to to comment, please give them the mic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody, uh, if anybody is in contact with the neighbors who may or may not be on this call and they want to comment separately, they can send Zach a message. Yes, my email yeah. is zmcronin at cityofportsmouth.com, which is on the presentation. Yes, which is also on the yeah. presentation. So I can bounce back to the utilities club. Yes, so we can look at it while we're talking about it. Go ahead, Justin. Hi, <clears throat> sorry, this is actually um, Lainey on Justin's yeah. phone. So I am one of the neighbors that I think Steve was just talking about um, and just wanted to sort of echo their concerns. Uh, it's not ever been something that struck me as a necessity to have a sidewalk here. Um, and I, I guess, yeah, I, I want to lend my voice to the questioning of whether or not that's really necessary. I would certainly prefer not to lose yard. And I think also, um, as Steve raised, the, the parking situation wouldn't get any better. It's already quite narrow. And I think uh, myself and some of the other neighbors on, on this side of the street park on the street and it, it doesn't leave much. I'm staring at it right now. It doesn't, doesn't leave much for uh, we're, uh, other we're, parts of the We're keenly aware of all these issues. We, we did it, look at it quite a bit um, it, when we were doing this. And like I said, the, the, principal, the principal goal here was to is to create um, some stormwater collection possibilities um, and do that in a creative way that will actually enhance the property 
and make things better for your downhill neighbors. Yeah, okay. I don't think that necessarily changes my, my questioning of the necessity of a sidewalk um, from a sort of, I guess at least for, for me, a functional or aesthetic value on this side. And, and um, I think I missed uh, the earlier section of the call, so forgive me if this has already been gone over. Uh, and Rick probably raised it, but I definitely would be a proponent of not losing any trees or minimizing, sorry, fighting and cold, loss of trees, um, you know, if possible. So yeah, I guess I just, as as someone who would be directly impacted by this, I'm a little bit questioning the necessity of the sidewalk versus what we would lose in space. So we already went over the tree slide, but um, we are yeah, that's fine. You know, very, very few trees on this project. Uh, we went through the whole neighborhood with the city arborist and I believe the only trees we're losing are trees that are either unhealthy or trees that are invasive species. The ones that are right? Yeah, there's some small ones. And a couple of small trees are on that corner. Sure, corner, corner. Yeah. corner. Yeah. No, but yeah, that's that's great comments, and that's certainly the feedback we're looking for is uh, we want to know what people think of that layout and that that is taken to heart. So I think, you know, th there is a balance between providing overall connectivity throughout the city and other people that don't live adjacent to it and providing some kind of accommodations for them. And then obviously the people that live there, that's the greatest impact is on you. So that, that is a that is a large consideration when we look at how this will lay out. Lainey, may I comment at this point? Yeah. Uh, sorry, one, one sec. Lainey, can I just grab your, your address before we forget it? Sure, it's 152, Orchard. Thank you. And just to maybe, maybe and again, if I missed it in the beginning of the call, I, I'm sorry, but when you mentioned that this is for sort of connectivity for the rest of the city, it's this isn't this stretch in particular of Orchard doesn't really con connect to anything. Um, uh, no, it's, it's people people out walking within the neighborhood, right? Not just I'm just, I'm saying that there's neighbors and other people throughout the neighborhood that may walk down orchard that you know may benefit from a sidewalk being off the roadway and kids and going to school and things like that. So that's that's what I mean by certainly yeah. you can walk this way if you're coming from Marston, Lincoln, somewhere else, coming from that side of town, and you're heading towards Lafayette Park or something else. You may walk down orchard. Sure. No, I. I walk it myself many times yep so you can see on that that turn of orchard uh, those red trees at the left side that that's the reason we're looking at those as trees that are will be eliminated is widening the road in that direction to accommodate um, the sidewalk so it's not an overall loss of width or narrow mm -hmm. really. uh, so that's something we are trying to accommodate gotcha okay well i'm happy to hand it over i think just lending my voice to two opinions. The upside down L is created by Orchard Street and the intersection of Willard. That is indicating a sidewalk all the way around there. Am I correct, sir? It, yeah, it, so the okay. purple line is the purple sidewalk. line. That is a sidewalk. Now, I'm in sympathy with the people. Lanny, especially who's my neighbor and the other four people along that street. There are there is something that needs to be done. Have you investigated purely by doing some type of a redirection or at least putting a granite curbing to accommodate cars and still yet cause the flow of water and drainage to go in a direction that you've looked at instead of solving it with something is three and a half feet wide, looking at something somewhere with about a foot, a foot and a half, sir. You know, you know, because honestly speaking, I, my front window in my office, look at that street. And it's a very popular place for people, for our, our neighbors. They bring their dogs. I can't tell you. My street, my house, the front of my house is the most popular potty outside of the, the Area over here by the school. And I don't want to take that away. I mean, you put water out there to my lawyer said, Rick, don't do that. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, I, I just having just curbing and in place of that sidewalk there, I think every it would enhance the whole area and still accommodate what you're trying to do on the hydro sense. I think that makes an excellent point. 
I mean, we, I think we've heard you. I mean, our first volley is to do a sidewalk. If you, if, if you guys are all in favor of, of not having that sidewalk, then we'll show them to take a look at that. As long as we can still achieve our overall goal of creating some sort of mechanism to pick up that stormwater. Absolutely. Yeah. So, That's what I try to start so everything off. We can be a little more creative and look at that a little more in depth. Certainly. And certainly, even that corner where the red tree is, I believe that that is uh, an extremely old rhododendron, my memory serves me, or something at that corner. And if you, you, you narrow the sidewalk at that corner, you're going to even increase your arc for coming around. Because I can tell you right now, yeah, you can't come up that way with a significant truck. Right. And make a right turn right. to go down Orchard yeah. Street. We know that, and okay. that's why I mean that's why this is a crux of you. Oh, okay, because, yeah, okay, yeah. Because we I have found we have found that we have to show people something, yeah, so that they can comment on. Yeah. If we come in here and we don't have anything, then people don't know what to say because they don't know what's possible and what's or what is not possible. Well, I think you're going. I think you're going down the right direction, sir. I do. I don't okay. quite about that in my mind. Good. So, we have, uh, we have one additional person on uh, Zoom, but before that, I just wanted to let the people know that uh, we're putting information in the chat that we are watching it. It looks like we've uh, addressed the majority of the comments and questions in there. A lot of them are reiterating the dialogue here about the, the sidewalk. So, uh, Mr. 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 or Mrs. Collins. Should be able to speak. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, sorry, we joined late because I thought it was tomorrow, but um, we live on 111 Willard Ave. And as you can see, our, si our uh, driveway is on Ash Street. And I was just wondering, I can't really see from this picture if the new sidewalk, is it on what is now part of our driveway or is it on the street side of oh, that? It's, it's part of what is now asphalt street. Street, so our driveway will not be shortened. Exactly. Okay, that's nice. And Ash Street is super quiet, and I don't know if other neighbors have spoken up yet, but uh, or what their opinion is. But is it really necessary to put a drive uh, sidewalk there? It's a very nice wide street right now. Right, and we felt that it really could be a, a little bit better, narrower street with a sidewalk, so that there's interconnectivity. And again, one of our major goals here is try to is to try to collect and um, and capture stormwater efficiently so that we can deal with some of the drainage issues in some of the side yards that we were told about. So this is a yet another mechanism to try to create um, areas to capture stormwater and put it into the piping system. Another uh, reasoning of putting sidewalk onto ash is that lower section of ash in the picture does have a sidewalk on that side of the road. So that was in continuation of the sidewalk along Ash Street. So that was one of our considerations. There. So we felt in general, it made a lot of sense to put a sidewalk there. As long as we could do it where there's asphalt now, so it's not impinging on anybody's perceived property rights. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments from folks on Zoom? Right, Vicki? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. All right, good. My, um, my Zoom uh, prompts don't seem to be uh, performing as I would like them to. So I have put some of my um, comments in the chat section, and I understand that you've been monitoring them. So I'm actually in agreement with those who have raised concerns about Orchard Street, and I raised these concerns in the first meeting as well, I would echo that that first turn, left turn onto Orchard Street is, um, is narrow and that corner is, um, is very narrow and I'm concerned about safety if we narrow it further with a sidewalk. So going up and around there, as Rick pointed out, I wasn't thinking about trucks, but I approach my home sometimes from there just to see what it's like. And one has to be very careful. I'm home all day and um, 
and there really is no automobile traffic other um, for those who live there or have people visiting them there or are having work done at their homes. And the people who do walk, um, am I correct? Can you, can you refresh my memory as to what the width is that would be needed for a sidewalk? The proposed sidewalk would be five and a half feet wide. Five and a half feet, is that, and does that include the grass area and the curbing? In this case, yes, it would be right up against the curb in this case. Yep. And there would be uh, no grass strip on this section. So, all right, and what's the maintenance um, of, of the sidewalks? Does the city maintain the sidewalks during the winter? Well, right now we don't because they're not wide enough. In, in these spots, they're actually not wide enough for us to maintain, but we're hoping, we're aspirational that these sidewalks will get maintained. All right, but not now. We get your address. So so that means that if there were sidewalks, they wouldn't serve anybody in the winter time, uh, when it when there's snow, unless the residents um, shovel it, shovel the sidewalks. Yeah, I'm not sure that's what I said. Um, Vicky, what oh, well, you if the city doesn't maintain them and there's a snowstorm, then the snow isn't cleared. Yeah, you know what I said. What I said. So we have a list of sidewalks that we maintain. Regularly, regularly at it's the first whack that we do every time. So the, the sidewalks on Lafayette Road, there are the sidewalks on South Street, there are the sidewalks by the schools. And then we yeah. have a second tier of sidewalks that we do after the fact. Yeah. So after the snow event, we go around and we start clearing out the snow on the side streets. So this should be in, in that category. So I do have a concern and I understand that and I appreciate that the main streets, um, the sidewalks are cleared because those are the ones that are used. So, um, so I, um, so thank you for clarifying that it would be five and a half feet. I also am concerned about the people who need to park on the street. And again, at that real tight corner of Orchard Street, um, it's precarious. Yep coming around the corner and taking anything away from the street is going to make it more precarious. We hear you. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, can, you can we please get your address? Sure, 88 Orchard Street. 88, thank you. Any other comments, Vicki, or is that it? No, my, my comment is it sounds like those who are speaking have concerns about the sidewalks and I don't wanna speak for all my neighbors, the neighbors to whom I've talked about. Certainly there, um, I think I've talked to one person on Orchard Street who is okay with a sidewalk on one side, the other neighbors I've talked to across the street. And it sounds like more neighbors here have, um, are voicing um, real concerns about having sidewalks on a, a street that really is not used as a pass through. It's not used by, I, I'm here all day, I promise you. And my dog barks every time somebody goes by. So, you know, if you need somebody to keep track of the traffic just to um, uh, validate, you know, the, the need for it or not, um, I'm your guy. Vicki, just so you understand, you know the sidewalks going across the street, right? Yeah, for your, your yes, section. and I'm not really concerned about my, it, it doesn't matter whether it's my front yard or somebody else's front yard. That's not, you know, that's not my concern. It's the overall concern for my street. Okay. And the Thanks people who live on my street, and I don't have children or grandchildren, but I see the people who, um, who you know, use the um, street to walk their children and three and a half feet is not necessarily going to accommodate a dog, a stroller and two adults. So they're still gonna be walking on the street. Right. Yeah, <laughs> just five, just five saying, five just saying. Yeah, no, so, so I think, Vicki, sorry, just to clear up. So there will be sidewalk from Marston to Ash Street. I think that is yeah. certainly warranted and in demand and there's sections that are there now and that is needed to provide connectivity throughout the neighborhoods. And that's a five and a half foot sidewalk and it would have a grass strip between the curb and the, I think the consideration is between ash and as you get around the narrow corner of orchard, uh, whether that is sidewalk that's attached to the road or not. So I think certainly there, there's a demand and a need for sidewalk on the section between ash and Marston. And then the question is, are we considering eliminating the, the, 
the sidewalk and the rest of Orchard on the east of Ash Street. Correct, and I agree with Marston to Ash. Yep, uh, Will, uh, Weiberg, Weiberg to Ash. Weiberg, I said Weiberg. Yes, Weiberg. Weiberg, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not going to speak to, because um, I haven't talked to neighbors that are right there. Um, uh, so I'm not going to speak. And even that's not traveled from um, from Willard Avenue to Ash Street. Um, the only people that I see coming and going are those who live on Ash or Orchard. They're just trying to get from one place to another. Again, Orchard's not, Ash to Orchard is not um, a pass through and um, except to get to Orchard Street. Understood, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from uh, the Zoom audience? Do you have any other comments from those here in person? Yeah, do you have a, uh, the lights? Are, there, are they going to be on the street or not? Street lights? Oh, lights. Pedestrian lights? I just take as a because it's currently street lights up on the on the oh, poles. The poles? Oh yeah, those, yeah. those won't get changed. Those won't be changed. No, and there's no other street lights. Uh, no, I'm no. Gonna, okay. And also, we just like to see uh, where are they, where are they, at two twenty nine Willard Avenue, which actually my wife and her sister own. Um, we're the first house that actually gets a runoff of Lafayette. And we're almost across from the house went for a little over a million dollars. So, you know, the water comes right down into that area. And before uh, sort of construction was done in that area last year, there was a drain there. And now we don't have a drain. And uh, my feeling is that's causing us some backup. And I don't know if you have a plan right now. What was uh, sort of taken away last year? Uh, so you're at 229 Willard? Yes. If you go up a little bit, you'll find that there are what was. What drain was taken away? Well, there was a drain there at one time. I don't know. Uh, uh, site. Uh, we haven't we taken take any drains away from there. I believe in a way he's referring to the house that was built. On Lafayette Road. No, on no, Lafayette Road. No, I'm right. talking about the where. You're talking about the neighbor's house. Yeah. Well, well, that, well, that, that too. I mean, all of the ledges. Yeah. They had to dig out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we understand that. So yeah. you have to understand that the street that you live on today is not an engineered street, not, not in modern terms. It was, it was laid out, sure. And it was, and, you know, there were, there were, Drains that were installed, and then and then there was plumbing that was installed. Houses that were then connected to the to storm drains. So the, the street that we're going to build is a fully engineered street that's that built to to take storm water and should hopefully fix the the issues of the two principal issues we saw is is well first of, first and foremost is collecting the the, the storm water that falls on the road, but also. It seems that this area is more or less a valley between South Street and Lafayette Road, both of which are high on ridges, and they both drain into this neighborhood. So one of our principal goals that Phil and I have talked about several times is how to collect that water so that it stops doing harm to the neighbors. So that's one of our principal goals with this project and, and how we're thinking about that. Yeah, I took two different groups of yours down cellar to look at the way our drain is that enters into the uh, into uh, the system. You mean your sewer drain? Yeah, your sewer. Line. Well, okay. <laughs> they got down there. Both groups that have been in doing yeah. it. One, well, I'd say last fall, and more recently, you had another group that went out to inspect the water. So, well, you can take a look at it, yeah. and I bet you'll be the second group to tell me you never start. These guys said, Oh, yeah, well, we've seen it all. And they came up, and you can ask them, I'm sure it's easy enough for you guys to tell who went out and saw it. 
they'll tell you they've never seen the sewer system sit that way ever. But it wasn't my feeling at one time is that house was bringing some water in the backyard or something. But odds, you know, as you do these changes, take into consideration that road, road drains, oh, well, look at past pack, past practice, and then look where other sewer drains were. It was right in front, which is now gone also. Uh, mass, uh, you say gas, sewer drains. Gas stations. You mean different spaces? But yeah, uh, a program. The one that used to be in front of uh, the uh, gas connector there that Northeast utility, Utilities had there. Yeah, you just have to call them to come out. Yeah. Yes. Is this like a sump yeah, pump one there? Sure. And I don't know how long it's been a month. I don't know. I'm very annoyed with the utilities. Okay, well, I for one am fascinated, so I'll be right. We'll take a look at it. I'm going I want to understand. I want to, we want to make sure we understand all the problems before we engineer a solution. So we'll be able to take a look. So, David or Phil, uh, we had a question. Uh, what was your address again? Thank you. From Vicki, just one clarification that she was under the understanding that ADA requirements for sidewalks were five and a half feet width. Can you just run through the uh, reasoning for our sidewalk widths and the ADA, <coughs> the ADA is actually less than five and a half feet. The five and a half feet has everything to do with our sidewalk tractors being five feet wide. And giving a little bit of leeway to our tractor drivers who usually have been out for several days while they're part of the sidewalk club. So the ADA actually is generally um, no less than 36 inches for a fixed distance. And we try, we endeavor to get five feet everywhere, and we yearn for five and a half feet everywhere. Yeah. yeah, good current right current guidance that is isn't officially adopted, but what it's what everybody uses now is five feet for a sidewalk. You can narrow down in specific instances for a short stretch, but yeah, five and a half feet is to accommodate the maintenance of the sidewalk. Any other questions? I see no yeah. One more. The side, the sides of the streets, on the matter which one we're on. Do not receive a sidewalk. Are they all going to receive granite curvy, or is it going to maintain? Yes. I noticed the original pictures that you had, but you only showed it certain Okay, that's fine. Good. Okay. Well, for years. Only. We'll be, we'll be reviewing the comments from tonight. We'll uh, notify people of any kind of adjustments if we make them. Yeah, we'll make sure that we're looking at them while we uh, go into final design. And again, the next public meeting will be the hopefully pre construction meeting with the contract. We got another. Um, we do. Yeah. Go ahead, Kate. Hey, just not to beat a dead horse, but um, could you speak to whether or not in the sidewalk versus curb issue, would, would curbs correct the stormwater issues instead of a, if where people don't aren't keen on sidewalks? Or that's not enough to yeah, no, capture certainly, those terms. certainly right there's a variety of strategies uh i think dave's looking at the overall grading and trying to improve yards and make everything fit but yes mm -hmm. curbing can help collect and direct stormwater too yep it is the principal use of curbing okay. Yep. okay i guess i would i would wonder for that portion where people are concerned on, you know, especially around orchard where it narrows, if that could correct the issue where, um, you know, there where there isn't a lot of, of traffic, Understood. and and wondering where that if that fits if, if that fits into my little portion of Ash where I'm at one Ash Street, just just a thought. We will uh, we'll review this again based on everybody's mm -hmm. comments, and we'll we'll send out some kind of distribution to folks mm -hmm. to let us. Okay. Let you know where we landed on this particular topic. Great, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kate. Go ahead, Joe. Joe, are you there? 
Hi, this is June. Oh, June. Yeah, Hi. Hi, I'm at 104 Orchard, and I currently have a partial sidewalk in front of my house. So if that partial sidewalk is going away, does that mean the street is now closer to my house? No, nope. No, it, we, we, it will likely go away as part of the reconstruction, but it would be restored. You know, we would look at the surface treatment based on what's going on out there, but it would be either grass or something else. But the, in general, the, the edge of the roadway is gonna be pretty much where it is. And there's just gonna be the sidewalk continuously on the other side. And I get a lot of water in my backyard and I don't have any curbing there, but I, from what I understand, it's the sidewalk on ash that's gonna prevent the water from coming it's, in my backyard. It's both the sidewalk on orchard and ash. Okay, good. And I like sidewalks. I know there's been a lot of um, uh, people saying they're not big fans of sidewalks, but I like a good sidewalk. I just want to say yeah. that. Don't don't be afraid to advocate for it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Here's to be the last uh, comment on Zoom. Okay, so one more time, we'll be posting this on the city web page um, when we are done. Uh, Assessing all these comments, we will post a uh, kind of a design plan that will show the, uh, the sidewalks and the drains and all that sort of thing as we're as we're creeping into um, ever forward into a final design and a construction document set. We'll be posting those documents up on the page. So just take it, you know, every so often, check the page, and we'll see if uh, there are updates. We'll be moving forward with the final design over the balance of this calendar year. And thanks for taking the time to come. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, for those who have not signed in yet, please do. Looks like there's one more comment on Zoom. Yeah, this is, so, this is all right. Okay, one more. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, this is Bill Collins over at 111. Um, and we're at 111, Willard. Uh, I noticed the uh, the new sewer lines going in through Ash. Now that's where we currently tap. Uh, we current our sewer currently drains into that line. And will there be an opportunity for us to um, upgrade uh, the new connect our, our connection to the new uh, to the new sewer line? Yeah, when we're in the midst of uh, the early part of construction and. Um, if you get the opportunity to reach out to Zach, do that soon and we can get that on our radar so okay. that hopefully you can um, coordinate the work that you'll be doing on your private property right. with the work that we'll be doing on the, on the, on the public side. Um, probably will not be the same contractor, but we can work with you to coordinate and arrange that stuff. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good night. Just the width of the is that... 